night these kids won't forget. Why did Dex collapse? It's not user error. Nearly every time it's because of the ledger, that is, where and how it's attached to the house. Sometimes it's just assumed that because your house has one, that it's good to go for a deck. Maybe the guy who built yours assumed that? One first step might be to check and see if it was built with a permit. Let's say this is your house wall. And the green board here is where your ledger's going to go on, or maybe it already is on. Check how it's attached. If it's just nails, it's pretty likely it's going to fall. It should be bolted. Two bolts every 16 inches is pretty standard. And next, check for flashing. This will be a little bit of metal that wraps over the top of the ledger. Ideally, the flashing will be tucked under the house wrap or the tar paper and the siding would come all the way down to the ledger. Decking would go up against that. The idea here is to allow water that runs down your siding to escape under the decking over the front of the flashing and out instead of leaching in behind your ledger. Also look at the bottom of the ledger. Here water can cling to the ledger and actually move sideways and get behind the siding so this should be caulked all along the bottom. Same with seams like this, where water can get in and run in behind your siding under the ledger. Here's a deck with no flashing. You can see debris building up in there. That'll trap moisture. Moisture will get in behind the ledger. Here the flashing is over the decking, and as you can see, moisture can get in under that and come in behind the ledger, which defeats the whole purpose of the flashing. Here's a situation where the deck was attached right against the siding. And this is what happens. Rots your rim joist, the water runs down, gets into your insulation, mold. Anything bolted in here is going to come right out. And here's another spot water usually gets in. The trick is to run the top flashing past the end of the ledger. And for the side flashing, create a kick out where water will come out over the top of the siding if it gets in that area. In this situation, there is no siding to run the leg of the flashing up behind, so we've cut a groove into the lumber and created a downhill slope to that flashing that will direct the water over the front of the ledger. Even if the ledger is attached correctly, is it attached where it shouldn't be? It won't do any good if it's attached to something else that will fail. There's no foundation walls under this bumped out area, so all the weight is transferred from the deck to this area, which may not be designed to hold weight. The way to deal with this is to build an H-frame that spans around the area. See the H? All the weight now is on the house. This bump out has foundation walls under it, so it'll be fine. See the difference? Support under, no support under. Make sure that there's skewed joist hangers on these angled joists. This is another bumped out area. The whole back of the house is bumped out. Now that means that all the weight is on the cantilever. It should probably have a beam right here to carry all the weight that is overhanging the foundation wall. And here's a really bad idea, just hanging right off the cantilever without even a ledger. We see a lot of situations where they're just missing joist hangers. Maybe they have them on the house side, but on the outside beam, often they're missing. In this picture, the joists are cantilevered over the top of this beam, so joist hangers aren't needed there on that end. This is a joist hanger, a single joist. This is a double wide joist hanger for situations where the lumber has been doubled to carry extra weight. You can see here that part of the weight of the deck is transferred to another member. It's also common to see 
Missing nails in joist hangers. All the small holes need to be filled. Don't worry about the big ones. This is a joist hanger nail. They are not just ordinary nails. The heads are designed to not break off and they're made of the same metal that the joist hanger is and that's important. They're short but that's because they only need to go into the ledger itself and not the house. However the nails on the side of the joist are longer usually 16 penny nails. So look to make sure you have the right nails. If they're all rusty, chances are they're not the right ones. See the heads are bigger on these roofing nails and they're reacting with the metal on the joist hanger and they're gonna break off and the joist will be vulnerable to falling. They're a problem even without rust. Check the bolts too for rust because they might not be the right metal also. And there was a time when they changed the composition of treated lumber that the hardware was not compatible with it and would be eaten away by the contents of the wood. So if you see rusty joist hangers, take them off, replace them. This deck does not look like it fell from the ledger. It looks like the beam cracked. The beam on the outer edge would carry a lot of weight from the internal framing. So if they just used a single member, you could see where it would stress and eventually fail. There's probably some missing joist hangers or maybe some rotted joists also. For decks, a beam most often is simply doubling up the joists wherever weight is being transferred. You see it done twice here. The uh, joists on the right being carried entirely by the beam running horizontally and that beam being held by the beam running up and down on the left. For larger spans, you need to use a beam that's strong enough to go the distance. Like this one, treated 6 inches across, laminated about 12 inches deep. You see a lot of situations where the beams are just bolted to the side of a post Sometimes you see the post is even a 4x4 four four and it may not be fully seated. You can see that this method has a problem. It can allow the beam to twist. This is how I like to do it, where it's notched into the 6x6 and the back of the 6x6 offers support against that twisting. If you have any questions about any of this, feel free to give us a call. Thanks for watching.